Today we'll be continuing our discussion on tree-based data structures from last episode by talking about the heap. We will begin with some general knowledge on what a heap is, followed by a discussion on the two major types of heaps generally used in computer science, the min and max heaps. Then we'll build a heap to show you how the properties of a heap get put to use before jumping into how to remove nodes from a heap. This will then give us the knowledge to talk about why heaps are so useful in computer science by discussing some of their most common implementations. We've got a lot on the docket for today, but if this is your first video in the series, I'd highly recommend watching the previous episodes in our Introduction to Data Structures playlist, which can be accessed through the card on your screen now or through a link in the description below. If anything, I'd recommend watching our episode on trees, as that contains vital information for today's episode. With all that being said, let's begin. Now back in our episode on trees, we talked about the binary search tree, a special type of tree which has a few properties. Each node only has two children, the child to the left must have a value less than the parent node, and the child to the right must have a value greater than the parent node. And finally, no two nodes could contain the same value. We talked about how this was useful because by setting restrictions on where the data could be stored within the tree, it allowed us to search through it at a much quicker rate. Well, a heap is sort of like this, but a little bit different. More specifically, by definition, a heap is a special tree where all parent nodes compare to their child nodes in some specific way. This specific way determines where the data is stored and is usually dependent on the parent node's value. There are two different methodologies generally used in computer science to make heaps, and they come together to form what are known as min heaps and max heaps. In a min heap, the value at the root node of the tree must be the minimum amongst all of its children, and this fact must be recursively the same for all parent nodes contained within the heap. So each parent node must have a value lower than all of its child nodes. As you can see from our example on the screen now, 10 is the root node and also the lowest value within the heap. Additionally, if we pick any parent node on the heap and look at its children and their children and so on, that parent node will have the lowest value of them all. Take 14 for example. Its value is less than 26, 31, 44, 35, and 33. This is the case for every single subtree in the heap as well. Max heaps, on the other hand, are the exact opposite. In a max heap, the value at the root node of the tree must be the maximum amongst all of its children, and this fact must be recursively the same for all parent nodes contained within the heap. If you take a look at the example max heap we have up on the screen now, you'll see that this is again the case. 44 is the root node and also the largest value within the heap, and if you look at, say, the subtree which is headed by the 35 node, you'll see that it is greater than all of its child nodes, both 19 and 27. Min and max heaps come together to form the majority of heaps that are used by computer scientists in the real world, and both have their advantages and disadvantages depending on what implementation of a heap you would like to use. Moving on, heaps are extremely easy to add to and remove from, and this lends itself to a lot of useful implementations which you'll see later on. To show you this, let's build an example max heap. Of course, a max heap being the one which has the greatest integer at the top. For the sake of keeping things simple, let's pull up an array of seven elements with integers ranging from zero to 100 and convert it into a heap. This can be done in a few easy steps. Step one is we add the first integer in as the root node. So 70 would get inserted into our heap as the root node. Then we add another node at the bottom of the heap at the leftmost position available. So we would first insert a node at the bottom of the heap to the left. For our heap, this means adding the integer 4 as a child of the 70 node. The final step is to recursively go up the heap and swap nodes if necessary. Now when we say if necessary, we mean that if the node we just added is more extreme, either greater than or less than the node above it, depending on the type of heap that we've created, we need to swap them to maintain order amongst the heap. So, since we're building a max heap and 70 is greater than 4, no swaps are necessary. Now we just repeat steps 2 and 3 until we've had our heap built. 
So next, we would add the integer 90, and since the left slot is already taken by our 4 node, the right slot ends up being the leftmost location on our heap. So we would add that there, and then, since 90 is greater than 70, we would swap the 90 and 70 nodes. Doing this keeps the max heap property intact. Next, we would add 45 to the bottom left as a child of the 4 node, since we've run out of space on the second level of our heap. Then we would compare it to 4, which it is greater than, so we would swap the nodes. Now we would compare 45 to 90, and since it is not greater than 90, it would stay put. Next up, we add 23 as another child of the 45 node, and since it's not greater than 45, we keep it as is. Moving on, we insert 76 into the tree as a child of the 70 node, and then we would swap the 76 and 70 nodes, as 76 is indeed greater than 70. You'll notice we moved to the right part of the heap now, because each node can only have two children. The next node we add is the 100 node. We compare it to the 76 node and see that it's greater, so it gets swapped. And then we would compare it again, this time to the 90 node. And since again it is greater than that integer, it gets swapped. And there we have our completed heap. You can see it's a pretty simple concept. You add a node and then keep swapping until it's in its rightful place. Of course, you do not have to read the information from an array, that was just an example. The data could come from any source. Deleting is also pretty simple, at least in our case, since the type of deletion that I want to talk to you guys about is removing the root node from the heap, and you'll see why later on. To delete the root node from a heap, you also follow a three-step process. Step 1 is actually removing the root node from our heap, so in this case we delete the 100 node. Then, step 2 is replacing it with the node furthest to the right of our heap. In this case, it is the 76 node. Finally, for step 3, we do what's known as a heapify to fix up the heap. We start with the root node and compare it to its children to see if we need to swap any values. So for the 76 node, since it's less than the 90 node, we'd end up swapping the two. Then we would wash, rinse, repeat for every subheap that we have within the heap. So on the right side, we swapped 90 with 76, but since 76 remains the greatest integer on that particular subtree, it stays within the same spot. On the left side, we didn't change anything, but 45 is still the greatest integer amongst the three, so the heap properties are still intact and our heapify has been completed. That's inserting and deleting nodes in a nutshell. Now let's talk about how we can use this to our advantage. Heaps are most commonly used in the implementation of heap sort. Heap sort is a sorting algorithm which takes in a list of elements, builds them into a min or max heap, and then removes the root node continuously to make a sorted list. Because heaps always start with the minimum or maximum value contained within them, we're able to just remove the root node over and over again, heapifying our data structure after every pass until we remove every element and are left with a sorted list. On your screen, you'll see we have an unsorted list on the left, in the middle we've created a max heap, and then we can keep removing elements until finally we're left with a sorted list on the right. Heap sort is a really cool algorithm, and will be part of our upcoming series on sorting algorithms, which is kicking off very soon. So if you're interested in that, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it. Another extremely popular use of heaps is through the implementation of priority queues. Priority queues are an advanced data structure which your computer uses to designate tasks and assign computer power based on how urgent the matter is. Think of it like a line at the hospital. You wouldn't want your line to follow a regular queue that implements the FIFO, or first in first out methodology, since then you could have patients with extremely urgent matters like a heart attack waiting behind people coming in for a routine checkup. In the same way, you wouldn't want your computer to update an application before it finishes rendering a video, otherwise your progress would be lost. Priority queues take care of all the task scheduling done by your computer, and the heap data structure is used as the backbone for it. And with that ends our discussion on heaps. To review, they are a special tree in which each level contains nodes with values more extreme, either greater than or less than, the nodes on the level above it. 
Next week is our final episode, I'm sorry to say, and we'll be on graphs, so stay tuned for that. Thank you for watching.